Hey everybody, welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. Well, today we've got a lot going on here on the homestead. Today, we've got a lot going on with animals, I should say, here on the homestead. Everything that we're doing today really revolves around the animals, so we thought we'd bring you guys along. So we have news about the, the beef cattle, we have news about dairy cattle, and a special arrival today through the mail. We're getting brand new ducklings today. So a lot going on. We're gonna start this morning by going out and checking on our beef cattle. We also need to move them to a new paddock. You guys, some of you might already know because you get our weekly newsletter. If you don't get our weekly newsletter, I suggest you go to our website and sign up. It's absolutely free, it comes out every Sunday. It tells you kind of some of the behind the scenes things going mm -hmm. on here on the homestead. But for those of you who haven't heard, we've had three calves born already this year from our beef cattle and We've got a couple more mamas that look like they're very, very close. So we're gonna go check this morning, see if maybe there's a fourth or even a fifth uh, calf out there. And uh, we're gonna move the cattle to a new paddock because they're done with hay for the year. Mm -hmm. They're now strictly on grass for the rest of the summer and they're already eaten down the paddock that they're in. So let's head over there and check them out, see if we've got any brand new calves. Well, it was no, there was no hiding it from the beef cattle that we were coming out here and that we're gonna move them. As soon as they saw us walking out here, they started running toward the fence here. <clears throat> we're actually in our dairy pasture area. We have it cut in, in half here uh, so that we can have the beef cattle on this side to uh, eat the grass over here and we keep our dairy cattle over here. Well, first we're gonna count the mamas and make sure that everybody's here and the yearling calves, the heifers that we held over from last year. If there's one missing, that means that she's probably somewhere having a calf or with a newborn calf. Uh, so we need to just count everybody. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, so everybody that should be here is here. Now we've got three new calves, like we told you before. We have a heifer calf and two bull calves. I'm seeing one, two, and then the third one is laying way in the back in the sun. So everybody's accounted for. We do wanna just show you how cute these gorgeous calves are. Our bull is a registered Hereford bull and our herd of mamas are Hereford Limousine Cross. So all the babies so far have been coming out looking more like the Hereford with the bright white face and the nice red bodies. All right, let's go look at that other calf. So you can see the calf laying there. Mama's over here. She's coming to see what we're doing. All we're doing is making sure that it's okay. You're okay, mama. There's your baby. Oh yeah, he's fine. Oh, he's absolutely fine. Now, just like I thought, he was just enjoying the sunshine this morning. It does feel very nice to have some sunshine and for the wind to finally be gone. He's a skinny thing though. He's only a few days old, so. All right, we're gonna head off to uh, over where the gate is and then we're gonna let these guys out into another paddock.
As you can tell, they're ready to move. But they're good girls. They follow pretty well. They know where they're going. There you go, girls. Go find some grass. So on to the dairy cattle. The beef, have all, beef cattle have all gone where they need to be. Uh, we've actually uh, relocated temporarily the dairy cows from their pasture and we have moved them into the corral that's behind all of these, uh, all of this equipment here. So let's back up a little bit. Um, in November, at the end of November, we put Rose and Babe, our two dairy cattle, in with our bull to be bred. Two months after that, we brought them back out and we did blood tests to see if either or both of them were pregnant. It came back at that time that Rose was pregnant, but Babe was not. We were concerned about why Babe had been in with our bull for a couple of months and hadn't gotten pregnant. So we had the vet come out here to do a check uh, to see if there was something wrong, if she had a cyst on her ovary or something. And while the vet was out here, she determined that Babe was actually pregnant, but was too early in her pregnancy for it to be positive on the pregnancy blood test. Right. So all along, so for the last two months now, we've been assuming that they are both pregnant, which is awesome. And our plan all along was to confirm babe's pregnancy because the vet told us we should confirm it with a blood test a couple months after the vet was out here so we were planning on doing that soon anyway right. but yesterday you guys when we were coming in the driveway we noticed that babe was mounting rose out in the pasture and we saw it happen twice now, when a cow mounts another cow, that means that one of them is back in heat. Most likely, it's going to be that Rose is back in heat since Babe was mounting Rose. Typically, that's the way it works, although not always. So, you guys, if that's the case, if Rose is back in heat, it means that somewhere in the last two months she lost her pregnancy. We're not sure when that happened, but... You guys, we're really at a loss for what to do if if babe or if Rose comes back not pregnant again today. But we're not even going to talk about that today. We're not even going to consider that because we don't know anything until we do these blood tests and and get positive confirmation of whether or not uh, one or both of them or neither of them are still pregnant. Right. So right now we have them in the corral. We're going to push one at a time into the squeeze chute and we're going to take blood from under their tail so that we can take it into town and have the blood tests checked for pregnancy uh, and we can get results back today. Right. So that is uh, the next step for us to do is to get that blood taken so we can take it into town. So from here on out, we need to worry about the cattle and doing all of that, drawing the blood and everything else. We're gonna leave the camera rolling, but we're not gonna be able to like get close-ups and stuff like that because we just need to keep ourselves safe, keep the cattle safe and make sure that everybody is doing what they need to do. So, we're gonna draw blood. And suddenly the beef cattle have decided to come back around to check out what's going on. So, uh, they're gonna probably gonna be noisy in the background. Hopefully they don't knock the camera over. But we're gonna get going, we're gonna draw this blood and then we're gonna get it to town and then we'll actually be able to tell you guys the results in this video. So you're not gonna have to wait to find out the results. You're gonna find out pretty much when we find out. All right, we're gonna draw blood on these two cows. We need to draw uh, blood and get fill up a red top tube with blood and take that to town. All right, let's go. Come on, come on, that's 
That's the only way. That's the only way. Go on. Come on. Get in there. Get in there. Get in there. Get in there. Well, that all went well, getting the blood from uh, Rose and Babe. We actually ran those tubes of blood into town so that they could get those tests running, and they said they would call us this afternoon with the test results. While we were in town, the post office called and said that our ducklings were in. So we ran by there, picked up the ducklings, and we have raced home. Everything is set up for them in our brooder area, and so we are gonna take them out of the box show them to you, talk with you a little bit about ducklings and get them all set in their new home. All right, you guys, so we're inside of our barn. This is the barn where I raised my quail over the winter. And I made this little brooder area just for the ducklings. We have linoleum down on the floor here because it's just a plywood floor in this barn. So I made this little area, it's got linoleum. We put wood shavings down in it. You can see I've got everything set up for these guys. So we've got a heat lamp over here so they have a nice warm spot, although it is getting, starting to get warmer outside. So, you know, we're going to have this up a little bit like this because we don't want them to get too hot. But they got plenty of room to get away from it as well. We've already got their water set up in here. You can see, I've showed you guys in the past, the last time we got ducklings, how we make these. It's just a Tupperware a container or a storage bin like this with holes cut in it. These are small holes to start with. I've got another one with a little bit bigger holes for in a couple weeks when they get a little bit bigger. And we'll just gradually keep working our way up. Then we have it set inside of a water heater pan. You can pick these up at like Lowe's or Home Depot. We do this when we raise chicks, ducklings, anything. We put the water inside of one of these pans. That way if they make a mess, the mess stays contained inside of here and it doesn't get all of their bedding wet as well. We also have a feeder set up for them already. For these guys, we are using a 22% chick starter, a non-medicated starter. You wanna use non-medicated with any of these waterfowl. And one thing that I forgot to mention is in their water, we've actually added some niacin. Uh, I'll show you guys in a little bit how we do that. But with uh, waterfowl, with ducklings or geese, you need to add extra niacin because standard chick starter doesn't have enough niacin for these guys. So we do need to make sure that we're adding that to their water for at least the first eight weeks of their life. And that will get them off to a really good start. Okay, let's get this box opened up. Now, the ducklings that we have ordered are all the same kind. They're Pekin ducks. Those are our favorite kind of ducks. We've raised several varieties in the past but uh, the Pekins are our absolute favorite. They are the big white ducks, uh, kind of a classic looking duck. They grow super fast, you guys. These will actually be at processing size, at butcher size in eight weeks, if that's what we were raising them for. Now these will end up being our new laying flock. Uh, of course, unless we have way too many males, then some of them we may end up processing, but in general, these are gonna be our new laying flock. All right, let's get this box opened up and see, make sure everybody is okay. I'm gonna open up just half if I can. Well, maybe not. All right, we're just gonna open it up. Well, the good news is I don't see anybody that didn't 
survive the trip, so that's good. I think they did have a little water in there, so that's good. Now these are from Hoover's Hatchery. That's where we've ordered our last few sets of ducks from, and they've all done really well, so we decided to get from there again. Look at you guys! Now, ducklings only come straight run, so we don't know how many males and females we have, but it does look like they're all doing well. So, I'm gonna put them here, and we're gonna take their beak, and we're gonna dip it in the water so that they know where their water is. And we should have 15 of them here. So I'm gonna count them as I take them out, and each one, We'll show them where the water is, and in no time at all, they will be going and drinking. So that's number two. I decided to take the cover off of the water so you guys can see a little better how they're drinking. Now, the reason we have a waterer like this is because ducklings are messy. If you have just like a normal chicken waterer, they're going to just try to swim in the water, they're gonna just shake their head all over and make a big mess. This type of water with the little holes in it works really well. We've been using this system for probably 10 years now, every time we raise ducklings, and it works really well. There you go, guy. Put your head in there and take a little drink. There you go. Good job. That's number three. The ducklings have been in here for about 10 minutes now and one by one they are starting to figure out where their water is. I wanted to touch a little bit again on why we have this type of water. I already told you that the biggest reason is because ducklings are just super messy which is absolutely true. Apparently they're also good jumpers look at that. Um, now Ducklings at this age should not be allowed to swim in their water. If those holes were any bigger on this water, those ducklings would already be in there trying to swim. Now you may wonder why ducklings shouldn't be allowed to swim at this age, because out in the wild, when you go to the park or whatever, you might see ducklings swimming all around with their moms. Well, in the wild, the mother duck will actually get some of the oil from her feathers onto the ducklings by preening them, and by just snuggling up against them, some of the natural oils from her feathers will get on the ducklings. At this age, with these little pin feathers, the ducklings don't create their own oil yet on their feathers to keep them kind of waterproof. So, because of that, in a, ca in a captive situation like this, where there's no mom to rub that oil on them, they're not waterproof, so they shouldn't be allowed to swim at this age. They, their feathers would soak up all of that water, they would get chilled, and they would most likely die from being too cold. So they need to wait until they start to get their real feathers before they're really allowed to go in the water. Which will probably be about six weeks before that is the case. So until then, we're just going to have to keep them in a water like we have here where the holes are just big enough for them to get their heads in, but they're not big enough for them to be able to get all the way in and swim. We've been using this style of water for a long, long time, and I've raised a lot of ducklings this way, and it has worked out really well. Now, I did touch before on the fact that ducklings need niacin uh, as a supplement when you're raising them. The absolute best way to get the correct amount of niacin in their diet is by buying a duck or waterfowl feed, chick feed. In our area, that's just not available, and it's not available really in a lot of areas. So the next best thing to do, in my opinion, is to give it to them in their water. The way that we do it is we buy just standard niacin capsules. I got these on Amazon. These are just human niacin capsules. You want to make sure that you do not get the ones that say flush free. 
Um, those are like a time release capsule and that's not what you want for the ducklings. You want standard niacin that will create the flush. Basically because the ducklings, when they drink the water, it's gonna go through their system so fast if it's the flush free, it's never gonna have time to absorb into their system. So you need the stuff that does not say flush free. I read somewhere once a long time ago, a saying that made me always be able to remember it said, no flush, no good. And that's how I always remember that you don't want the flush. You want the stuff that flushes, not the stuff that's flush free. Hello. So what we do is these are 500 milligram uh, capsules, which is pretty standard for niacin supplements. It's got a powder inside of each capsule. What we do is we open up one capsule and add it to five gallons of water and just sprinkle it on top and then stir it around until it all absorbs in there. Then we use that water to fill their waterer every time they need it. And that will give them a good supply of niacin as they're starting to grow up. The other thing to keep in mind with ducklings is they need to start on a very high protein feed, uh, 22 to 24% protein feed, but only for the first two weeks. After two weeks old, if they continue to stay on a high protein feed, they can develop what's called angel wing. And basically that happens because their bones grow so fast if you keep them on a high protein feed that they just don't grow correctly. And what will happen is their wings will actually stick straight out and they won't be able to put them down. So in order to prevent that, after two weeks old, you wanna get them down to about 16% protein uh, in their feed. Well, you can see that these guys are all doing well. Looks like they've fallen in love with my leg here, probably because it's near the heat lamp and they think it's my leg that's giving them the warmth, not the heat lamp. So we're gonna let them settle in. They've had a long journey. They've been in the mail for the last two days, but it looks like they're all doing well. So we're gonna let them settle in, take a nap. We're gonna wait for those test results to come in on our dairy cows. And then uh, we'll let you know what those results are. And we'll come back and check on the ducklings one more time before the end of the video. Well, we still haven't heard the test results from Babe and Rose. We've called and they said that they're actually running the test right now. We should be hearing about them in just a little bit. So um, we are gonna go check on the ducklings one more time. Let's go see how they're doing. And hopefully by the time we're done doing that, we'll have the pregnancy results on these two and hopefully it'll be some good news. Well, it looks like everybody is doing okay. Uh, when we first came in, we probably should have had the camera rolling, but uh, I did see two of them have their heads in the water when we walked in. So. That's a good sign. Typically, if one or two of them find where the water is, everybody else is gonna find where the water is too. So I'll be checking on them every hour or so yet as I'm working outside for the rest of the day. And I think they're all going to be just fine. Looks like they're enjoying uh, the warmth under the heat lamp. It looks like, well, let's see, is this one gonna eat? No, he's probably gonna go for a drink. We're going to wait a few more minutes and see if we hear from the test results and we'll bring you those before the end of the video. Well, we got the call with the results and uh, we are very surprised, mainly because we saw mounting behavior yesterday, but the good news is they're both bred. We knew Rose was bred originally from the blood test from before. Uh, the vet had come out and told us that babe was pregnant but we were really really worried yesterday when we saw that behavior so we are so relieved right because we just didn't know what we were gonna do if we couldn't get these two girls bred it's been right. a long time i'm so relieved i'm so thankful that they are both pregnant and they're both still pregnant right so that means that if our calculations are right Rose should be calving sometime in September yeah. and Babe should be calving sometime in October. So by the fall time, we should be back in milk here on the homestead. You guys, thank you so much for stopping by today and spending some time with us and our animals. It was a good day. It was good to be with you guys right. and the animals. And in hindsight, now we can say today was all good news. Yeah, uh, right. New baby ducklings, uh, some new calves and 
now we know that both of our dairy cows are pregnant as well. You guys, if you're enjoying videos like this from us, make sure that you hit the subscribe button below. And remember that the best way to help us here on the homestead is just to share our videos on your social media. Until next time, thank you so much for stopping by our homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.